I feel like um, this year have been full of like just really great games. Um, so Caboose, if you don't have anything else to add, I'll just get into my choices. Go for it. Of the best games. Yeah. Um, okay, it's a tough one because, like I said, there's a lot of good games that came out this year. I'm going to first go with, you know, my pick, Miles Morales. I already spoke about that. I'm not going to tear up and talk about it again. But what I will talk about is I'm actually going to throw Marvel's Avengers in there as well. And, nice. oh, my God, I'm not going <laughs> to. And I'm, oh, I'm going to say it's for the same reason. Being a mixed kid with, you know, being black and South Asian. Mm seeing Kamala Khan mm-hmm. in a game with, I I think although the story was short, I actually really enjoyed um, the story. I enjoyed her relationship with her father. I yeah. felt like it was very authentic. Um, and just seeing that representation, of course, in a year where it's been real tough and it's been an eye opener for so many people that don't experience negativity every single day just because of the color of their skin. Um, so for me, Miles Morales and Marvel's Avengers were like the biggest highlights, uh, just because mm. in terms of what they meant. But with that, I'll add, I'm going to say Ghost of Tsushima. Um, it, nice. you know, you guys kind of hit, yeah, you guys hit the point. <laughs> it's just a beautifully, uh, done game. The graphics are amazing. Photo mode is insane. Um, the options of like, Playing it out like a classic Japanese film, samurai film, is just stunning. Yeah. And um, just kind of diving deep into the lore and how authentic they were to the samurai culture. Um, that was one of my main concerns going into Ghost of Tsushima. I wasn't as excited, um, especially after Days Gone and experiencing that. My hopes for Ghost of Tsushima kind of went downhill. Um, sure. When I talked to the devs, the year before what was last year 2019 (laughs) Um, and you know they assured that they did all this research that they went to japan they have so many people on their team that's like making sure that it's authentic to the culture and then experiencing that and talking to my friends who are japanese and like it 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 was done really well so Mm. the fact that they took the time for that i really do appreciate i'm gonna throw in you know what i'm not even doing top three i'm throwing in a few (laughs) games I'm doing Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity because it just really opened my eyes to the possibilities of Breath of the Wild 2. And it's kind of filling that void because I really want Breath of the Wild 2 to come out soon, Nintendo, if you're listening. And uh, Call of Duty Warzone. There's so much that that game has done uh, in terms of solidifying itself as a battle royale that can't be touched. It (laughs) has a story within a story. Their whole rebirth, well, no, firstly, their whole haunting of Verdansk event, that is, that was one of the best <laughs> events I would say a battle royale has put on. Usually you'll see them put like skins in there, special items and charms that you could collect. But they did a full on scare fest where you didn't even, you questioned if you wanted to play the game at all because any, any crates. Open, you know, was gonna pop, may pop up and scare you, and especially for me who plays like in the wee hours of the night, early morning, like screaming at three o'clock in the morning and having neighbors possibly hear. (laughs) It's another level of fear. Okay, (laughs) so I really enjoyed that event, and then now what they're doing with Rebirth Island, like you mentioned, Caboose incorporating Cold War into Warzone. I think they're going about this really well um and i have high hopes that activision will kind of break the jockish stereotype that's kind of like out there um with anything associated to call of duty because that is not the the full community of call of duty players although i would like to think i'm as cool as a jock but i'm not so i know you're way cooler you're way cooler thank you thank you (laughs) Also, like Call of Duty and like Activision standing up for Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. and putting things in place to kind of um, navigate away from the toxicity that's kind of grown as a um, as a thing that's in Call of Duty that you just have to deal with, you know. Um, so it, it's great to see overall how gaming has really stepped up 
has stepped up for the right reasons to kind of stand for people and help elevate voices that otherwise go unheard. And that's why The Last of Us Part Two is also on my list of games, just because I know um, with my friend Steve Saylor, he's worked on that game in terms of accessibility and the amount of things you could do in just before you start the game in terms of the options to make sure that you're able to fully play out that game to your best ability um, and mm-hmm. that they're able to help you do that is just mind-blowing and I think it sets the standard for what studios should aim to accomplish from the start. So that's for games for me um, mm-hmm. but in terms of moments oh oh gosh okay so when they revealed God of War Ragnarok, like yeah. I, yeah. I had the the privilege of speaking to a G Trough uh, who was a part of the developmental team for um, God of War. He mm-hmm. was the lead engineer, and he like just that conversation on what that team does day in and out, like how invested into the lore that team is and into the community, and making sure that they're delivering a Kratos that everybody that has been with Kratos from the start can kind of look to and say, yes, this, this is him. This is him. It made me really open my eyes and have faith in what that team could do next. And especially how the God of War ended, right? It ended on such a cliffhanger and you, you, with all these theories. And although I tried to cry them out from G, he held them secret. And now getting that reveal, I was, I, I was off my chair. I was crying. It was just something I didn't expect to see because it was earlier in the year when the pandemic was just starting and a lot of studios were trying to find their footing and figuring out what's going to happen with the games in terms of development, what they were expecting to release and finding out that we're getting God of War next year. um, I'm getting chills just talking about it. So that was like my game gaming moment. Did you hear about um, like Corey Barlog and and this thread of tweets that he put out like all the way back yes. last year? Yes. Uh, yeah. So for for anyone who might not be informed, there's a thread that's supposed to be like behind the scenes of the creation of God of War. It's it's just a straight up behind the scenes thread for God of War. But every first letter of every word in the entirety of this thread spells out Ragnarok is coming yeah and no one knew about it or at least as far as I know I don't think anyone don't caught think anyone on, on it. No. Yeah, yeah. until the game was revealed and their tagline of course was Ragnarok is coming you look back at this thread yep. he starts out with words like reminiscing as we prepared gotta say like it spells out the whole way through ragnarok is coming and i thought that was crazy we that a whole did. year and a half wow. ago <laughs> yeah a whole year and a half ago he teased this like i thought that was, that was awesome yeah, yeah and Corey, then you had, yeah go ahead i was just gonna say if you don't follow Corey on twitter you're missing out because that yeah. dude is mm-hmm. oh, he's amazing like, yeah. him he's, and boone like are, those are the go and Kojima, just because I'm a fangirl, um, those are the <laughs> go-to video game devs to follow. Um, they're just hilarious and like always putting out a little bit of a like a hint to what's coming next. So it's like really cool to follow them. I will say I'll add though, the whole race of next gen, um, like you know, coming yeah. out, that whole experience and being a part of it. Luckily, getting my console, you know, I know I'm very lucky in that manner. Uh, my consoles, I'm very lucky. I know a lot of people did not get a chance to, but seeing that lead up and the memes that have come from the race <laughs> for the consoles, like my favorite may be probably the PlayStation 5 as Kaiba, Sao Kaiba from Yu Gi Oh! Best meme ever. <laughs> I love Best that one. Love did that you one guys killed have a me. Console <laughs> meme for next gen? The fridge. Come on, yeah. the fridge I mean, that, that created the fridge, the, like, the fridge and the router, you know, yeah. like yeah. It, it, it never ends. It never ends. And then Microsoft going further and making that fridge a reality. Like it was it's just crazy. How, <laughs> yeah. yeah how the community, like that was a real showcase of how the the developers and these studios and these companies influence the community, but then how the community influences those companies. It was it was really uh, great to see. And you know what? I'm going to add in there a recent one 
Um, I'm going to say the reveal of Super Nintendo World. Because, come on. <laughs> yeah. Who's who's buying a ticket when it's safe to go? I am. I think I think I'll that's the only yeah. reason why my excitement was killed because it's like I, I was like Kevin Garnett and Uncut Gems, where it's like, why would you show this to me if I can't have it? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> that, so like it's, it looks amazing, but I'm I'm not going there anytime years, soon, unfortunately. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I just want to like they should even come out with it where we could maybe buy some of the food, like the peach flavored popcorn. I want that. Um, even the mushroom flavored popcorn, I'll take that mm. too. There's so I know when I go, I'm gonna be probably dropping a lot of money, so it, it's gonna be probably my only trip for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Money well spent, though, from what I've seen. Uh, it's uh, leave it to Nintendo probably. and Universal. I it's insane. Because yeah. <laughs> saying that though, I you know I feel like Mortal Kombat had a lot of reveals this year. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite one? Um. Oh boy, it it would have been Spawn if we got to experience that live. Um. Mm -hmm. It's it still feels weird that Final Combat and the Spawn reveal was still this year. You know, like it. Yeah. It felt like decades ago now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. But the aftermath reveal, I think, was really cool because that was one that really came out of nowhere. You know, after they wrapped up with Combat Pack One. Um, and they, you know, they showed, they showed off spawn. They released spawn. Everyone got to play him. People were like, okay, there's, there's probably going to be a combat pack too, right? Like, when are we going to expect this? What are they going to do? Then out of nowhere in May teaser goes up and it's like setting up a story expansion. And I just remember like watching the entire MK community, like their ears perk up and everyone's like, wait what like all we wanted was just more characters and you're giving yeah. us this thank you you know like it was just this unanimous like excitement that we were not only going to probably get more characters but we were getting a story expansion and it was not just a cool story expansion i think it was better than the base story of the game and it was to its core the most faithful like story that we've gotten from Mortal Kombat since like the originals, you know, since the original games that built and created the lore. Because at the end of the day, what Aftermath was about, it was Liu Kang versus Shang Tsung. And it was Carrie freaking Tagawa who played <laughs> Shang Tsung in the original movie acting out these scenes. It was incredible. That was for sure like one of the best. I don't even know why I didn't think of this earlier. One of the best <laughs> moments for sure. And then they revealed Combat Pack 2, which also was amazing. That was huge for a lot of people because people were begging for Melina to be in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and so they put her in. Rain as well, another highly requested character that they put into the game. Um, and hopefully it's not their last hurrah. Hopefully they got a couple more tricks up their sleeve. I'm crossing my fingers that with the Mortal Kombat movie, considering that it's so close and it's like right around the corner, that they maybe do something in collaboration with that like we get some movie skins in the game uh because yeah, i'm sure be. at least i'm hoping that even if everyone else looks terrible <laughs> you gotta nail scorpion and sub zero's design yeah if those yeah, two characters true. don't look insanely cool then my hype for the movie goes down drastically mm -hmm. like you can get Liu kang's pretty easy you give him a red headband and you know like <laughs> Some like some <laughs> some like I don't know whatever those types of pants are like martial arts pants you're good to go like Liu Kang done design finished uh, Jax you give him metal arms that's Jax um, <laughs> but like Scorpion yeah, and Sub Zero they always have like these very like hyper stylized yes. looks you know through mm -hmm. every single game so every iteration detail, yeah yeah there's always Dude. like this crazy look to them but you know that Scorpion that's Sub Zero <laughs> they the gotta nail it sorry. Yeah. Exactly. They are the poster boys yep, yep. of Mortal Kombat. Although they really try to make Liu Kang the poster boy. Like that. <laughs> Liu, Kang, Liu Kang is the protagonist of Mortal Kombat. I know, Kombat. but before, like the very first Mortal Kombat, they were yeah. really marketing Liu Kang and everyone's like, eh. Yeah. So but we've got right. these two guys over here. They're Come so on, much yeah. cooler. <laughs> but they're so much more eye-catching too. I mean, it's it's That's harder true. to disagree. And yeah, I could I could see it. Yeah. Now, for the end of the year, I, I just wanted to talk about, because there were some big stories that really um, were kind of downers for the year. You know, we found out that Mixer closed their doors, mm. um, yeah. you know, the whole cyberpunk fiasco. 
Um, right. All of that. What would you say that you're hoping that the industry, either as a community or studios, will learn, um, and that we will hopefully see a change to next year? Or well, the year? definitely, definitely in the case of of cyberpunk and um and and Avengers. Although I I really appreciate what you had to say about Avengers because I agree what they did with the story. I think was pretty damn good. Um, and especially with Kamala Khan, I think that they they really represented that character well. Uh, as a Muslim myself, I really love the representation um, of the character uh, and, and what they did. And like her relationship with her father, I was like, I relate to a lot of that. Yeah. Um, so I thought that that was awesome. Um, but obviously the game had a rocky launch. Um, and so seeing that and then seeing Cyberpunk coming out so close to that, yeah. it really put a, a lot of perspective for people that, as much as we want these games, as excited as we can be for these games, it's always for the better that we don't pressure these developers into wanting to release the games as soon as possible. Now, I don't want to put the onus entirely on community hype because that's a very small fraction of why these games ended up the way that they did at launch. Um, but, but that certainly plays a part because yeah. they see like, you know, the, the studio heads, whoever it is, the suits, they all see the hype. They all see the way that everyone's going crazy and they're all excited. And they take that and they run with it and they push these developers to try and get the games out as soon as possible. And then you get a Cyberpunk or you get a Marvel's Avengers. Uh, and I'm really hoping that, um, especially, I, I feel like there's no way that CD Projekt Red doesn't look at this as a massive learning lesson or a lesson, like, just in general, a lesson learned. And I hope as well, that every other developer yep. is, it has taken notice about what happened here because well, what happened yeah. with Avengers, it, it made some waves and a lot of people pointed out that, yeah, there, this was a bit of a mess, but with cyberpunk, it's like, it truly became like this huge, huge thing in the, in the gaming community. Especially now with uh, CD Projekt Red, like they, their, I would say their studio is kind of on the line, not in terms yeah. of just the confidence that gamers will have or investors that will have, but literally mm -hmm. their studio. They're looking at being sued by their investors, yeah. and that could cost them a lot of money and potentially shut down. Like you mm -hmm. don't know the possibilities that could happen from putting out a bad. Uh, product that obviously was not ready for launch so i'm i'm gonna go right alongside you with you there uh caboose i think that's one lesson that i really hope studios learn as well as the community learns that you know there's multiple people that go into the decisions to release a game it's not mm -hmm. just the devs it's not just you know some of the people working at the studios that you follow um they go through a whole board so you know although it can be frustrating looking at these moments to find positive ways to give feedback and making sure yeah. that you're not kind of giving into the toxicity that can be internet culture. Yeah. Yeah. I agree because there are some people who say some really nasty things to these developers. And I think that a lot of people don't understand that the developers, like somebody who's just like a programmer working on cyberpunk or an artist working on cyberpunk, they're not the ones who said we need to get this game out on December 10th. Like yeah. that, that wasn't yeah. their decision. They're, you're yelling at the wrong person. Uh, and even then, like, like you just have to kind of get it out there. Get your opinions out there as respectfully as you possibly can because just nothing gets done outside of that, you know? Nobody nobody working at CD Projekt Red is going to take you seriously when you're yeah. yelling at them the way that you might be on Twitter or wherever it is, you know? They're going yeah. to disregard your opinion and rather take what the actual feedback and constructive criticism that some people may be providing. Like for myself, outside of the bugs, there are a lot of them. But when when I when I'm the game is running and I'm not running into issues, I actually think Cyberpunk's a great game. Yes. Not like not even a good game, a great, great. game. Yeah. Um, there's so much potential there. Now, granted, I still think as well, even when the game is running perfectly, that it needs some quality of life fixes, that it needs some additional features, like the fact that I can't change my haircut and do anything with my character's look outside of the initial character creation is a bit of a bummer. Right. Um, so yeah, like the, a couple of things like that st still need to be added in, but now because it's such a buggy mess, they've got to fix all that stuff first before they can even get to any sort of like community feedback about like adding quality of life changes to the game. And so, you know, 
it, it sucks, but like, yeah, don't, don't harass the developers about it. Don't attack the developers about it. It's not necessarily their fault. As a matter of fact, they're going to be the ones working overtime so that this game yep. can run properly come hopefully February or whenever it may be that that second patch is going to go out. Exactly. Um, so, so if anything, you got to like, you guys got to be like leaving them words of encouragement, man. They are putting a lot on the line to, for your entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yell, right. yell at the big wigs, yell at the studio, <laughs> head, the suits, the people who decided that this game needs to come out at this date, you know, or on this date, you know, the people who said, no matter what, do not let people see what this game is going to look like before launch so that they could still buy it and spend their money and don't mm -hmm. cancel their pre-order yell at them. Those mm -hmm. are the people or, to blame. Even yeah. just while games are in development, understand that maybe waiting is the best option. And it is. Letting, if it's a franchise that you really care about, understand that developers working under crunch and, you know, if they hear the hype of the community, that's great. But if the community is very um, toxic in terms of making sure that the game is out for release regardless, you're going to get a situation like Cyberpunk because the studio heads will be pushing that game because that's what they're hearing from the community. So voice your opinion, voice that you want great mechanics, that you want great graphics throughout the development so that the studios can hear you and hopefully yeah. at launch you get a great quality game. Now, uh, before we go, I wanna sit in Malik and Steve, you're quickly uh, what you guys think in terms of what we can learn for next year. Yeah, I, I kind of talked about this sort of like my whole, whole roundup, but I, I just wanna see the industry do better just in general, just do better about like how we treat other people. Like going back to what we were talking about, Cyberpunk. I, I've spoken to many developers over the years, and not one of them have ever wanted to be like, "I'm going to release a broken game." Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Uh, no, everything that's happened yeah. is the, the executive thing. You got to hold them ac uh, accountable, and I think that's a large thing that I want to see move forward: is hold people accountable, the right people accountable, and don't you know, don't uh, don't harass people that are out there. Like it, it just it doesn't do anything well for the industry. It makes us all look poor. So let's just uh, do a lot better in how we act, uh, whether it's online or in person. Yeah. My, my joke answer is that I want to see cyberpunk with a third person mode. I think they really missed out there. <laughs> I, I yeah. like, you should be able to see your character. Like yeah. oh, that's a big thing. Sure. Kind of, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a world that's supposed to be colorful and, you know, you can customize everything. Um, and then just, I want to see studios, uh, just kind of discover some new stories in different cultures mm. uh, and, and really branch out from the from the same old stories that we keep getting, you know, the same old hero circle uh, that has been done since the beginning of time. I think that there's a lot of cultures and a lot of identities and a lot of uh, niche communities that aren't represented enough in gaming and that have unique uh, and compelling stories. Uh, that can really have a long-lasting impact on the industry as a whole if they're just given the correct time and care to be developed. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know what? I'm going to quickly add as well, um, just the... I want us to see more gaming in popular media, like mainstream yeah. media. Um, we, you know, got attention, the community, in terms of the political scene this year because a lot of uh, uh, politicians... Yeah. We're yeah. jumping on games and uh, ramping up towards the election. And I think those are great conversations to have, politics and gaming. I think we need to dive outside of just our gaming space as being entertainment and have other people from other areas of life have conversations of the um, – the collaborations between whether it's politics or whether it's celebrities and gaming, all of that stuff. Uh, just because the more that we have those conversations, I think the better we are equipped to move forward as a gaming community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was a, such a great discussion. There's so <laughs> much that happened throughout the year. Um, and honestly, you three have been essential to what is happening right here at Squad. Uh, before we go, we're going to let you guys know that we are going on a holiday break. We'll be back in the new year. You could know when we're going to come back by staying tuned to our uh, Twitter at Squad State. But you could also stay tuned to our website, squadstate.com. Steve Malik, they both write for the website. What do you boys have coming? 
Uh, I've got a couple last minute cyberpunk guides, but otherwise I'm, I'm taking this break. I, <laughs> taking this break is, has been well-deserved after this year. Uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to come back into the new year really refreshed, but I got a couple more things in the works now. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just working on some more Genshin Impact uh, articles and guides and things like that. Uh, that game has been continuously updating uh, and doing a really good job. Other than that, same thing, just relaxing. Valorant uh, has ended for the year, so it'll be nice to see uh, what we have to look forward to next year. Awesome. And Caboose, what, do you, what are your plans for the holiday? Uh, just chilling out, hanging out with the family, uh, taking it easy streaming a little bit here and there where i can uploading here and there where i can uh you can keep up to date with all the things going on with me on twitter and instagram at caboose ek or youtube.com slash caboose twitch.tv slash caboose and i'll see you all in the new year yeah and i will be uh, at the show we're shooting our last episode of the year this week, which is very sad, uh, but you could expect some great debates coming out of our last episode, as uh, Lisa and myself always do every episode. Uh, and over the holiday break, I, like you guys, I'm just going to relax, catch up with some games. Maybe we hop into Legends together. Finally. I'm down. Get okay. that I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> okay. I'm. All right, I'm going to hold you guys up for that. For you at home, I really do hope you guys have a safe holiday. Enjoy the time, um, whether it is through virtual or in person with your family, if it's safe to do so. It's been a tough year, but finally we're going to be able to say goodbye to 2020, and hopefully 2021 will be even better. There's no way it couldn't be. Uh, thank you guys <laughs> so much for watching, and we will see you in the new year.